so glad to see that so many people showed up on a fine afternoon like this to participate in this uh, screening program. Uh, about a year ago, I think we have done a screening program similar to this, which filled up very quickly, and people were very happy with the with the nature and the effort put in, and and the ease with which the screening was done. It really isn't a very lengthy process, as some of you can realize that already had the screening. It's a very simple process to do that, and the information you get, depending on what we find there, is pretty useful. The whole impetus for doing uh, carotid or carotid screening and abdominal aortic aneurysm screening are simply the ease and the, and the way you can approach it within minutes and without putting a lot of effort, without doing any invasive tests, without sticking needles and, and such into patients, you can get very valuable information about the overall health. Even if somebody walks in there in their 50s or 60s and, and if you have a risk profile of diabetes and if you're a smoker and if you have a family history of abdominal aortic aneurysms, if you have a high blood pressure, if you're approaching a certain age, 60s or so, and if anybody ever died in your family with a ruptured aneurysm, that's definitely a very good reason to have yourself screened. I want to say a couple of years ago, we did a screening, and an aneurysm, which was roughly about upwards of eight centimeters, was detected during the screening. So it's a totally asymptomatic patient, never smoked, never did anything, but in looking back, she had a family history of abdominal aortic aneurysm. And this was on the verge of rupture. This was like a you know, water bottle, basically, in her, in her stomach. And this lady who looked like a picture of health, she walked into a screening program and guess this detected. And a very complex aneurysm at that. And uh, during those days, we were not doing those exclusions here. We had to refer this patient to Houston because of the complexity of the aneurysm. And the risk profile for aneurysms or carotid disease is about the same as it is for uh, heart disease. Smoking, I'm, I'm reiterating this again and again, but smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, overweight, inactivity or lack of exercise, family history of having heart problems or aneurysms, all these are risk factors for these problems. So unless, and typically if you're in your 60s, 70s, and if you're not very active, you tend to not have any symptoms, you can have pretty serious silent heart disease and not know that. Thank you.